Are we giving foreign aid to Indonesia so they can build up their military? Let's have a look. Hello and welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. Today I'd like to discuss a article that I discovered today. Someone shared it on my Facebook page from 2013 in which the Indonesian president or former president vows to outgun Australia. And you think, why are we giving money to Indonesia when they're planning to just spend it on their military to outgun Australia? It's never what you quite seem, is it? So Indonesian president Susilo Bangbang Yidioro says his country should strive to have a more powerful military than Australia. Well, considering the population differences, you know, that wouldn't be too hard. About 16,000 Indonesian troops are preparing for joint military exercises in East Java. Meeting with military commanders, Mr. Yadiyoto told them that Indonesia's military should be bigger and more modern than countries like Australia, Singapore and Malaysia. Indonesia's military boasts 470,000 active troops at the time of this article, while the Australian Defence Force has just over 80,000 full-time personnel and reservists. It has also embarked on a military upgrade program building warships, drones, as well as buying jets, helicopters, and rockets. One thing to realize uh, when you're looking at militaries, while there is a disparity in troop numbers, technology makes a significant difference. So let's look at our Indonesian aid program that Australia has been doing. In 2013 to 14, we, our aid was 601 million. And 90% of that was through the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trades, with 20 other federal agencies contributing their expertise. 2014-15, it was $627 million. 2015-16, it went down to 380 give or take, million. And then in 2016-17, it was $357 million. The total... It's just shy of $2 billion of foreign aid to Indonesia over a four-year period. Or five-year period, 2013 to 2017. So now that we, we understand how much they're, they've received in aid, let's look at their military. Now, was former President Yadiyoro's claims, did, did they come to fruition? So I've looked at this data from the CIA World Facts book. And you can see here in 2013, they were spending just shy of 1%, so 0.92% of their GDP on their military. And now the latest figures, it's down to 0.84. So it took a dive, went, climbed up, and has gone back down. Their ranking is 125 in the world for their military capacity, or their, their country comparison ranking. Their GDP is, or their expenditure of GDP is 0.84. Now let's look at Australia. Good day, mate. Now our ranking is 48. Our GDP as expenditure at 2013 was at 1.68. Now it's at 2%, or in 2016 it was at 2% of GDP. So our spending on military has gone up and our ranking is much higher than theirs which isn't, isn't entirely surprising. Now let's compare GDPs. Australia is sitting at just sh just above 1.3 mil million at the moment. Sorry, 1.3 trillion. And Indonesia is just over $1 trillion. But you also have to realize that our populations are significantly different. So I thought we'd have a bit of fun and look at some of the data that you've got access to on Google, public data that you can see. And I thought I'd show the poverty gap. So this is a dollar twenty-five a day, the number of people or percentage of people that live at a dollar twenty-five. You can see here when you know our aid came in about 2013 to 15, 16, it's, it's you know it's gone down a little bit, but look at this drop here. From look at this, what year is that? That's 90, 98, not between 97 and 98, we'll say. 22%, 22% of their population was living on a buck 25 a day. And this is in fixed uh, purchasing power, I think. But 22% now, 
now, or when the figures I have here, 2016, under 2%. Look at that. Now, a lot of people have this misconception that there's this, you know, primitive third world where, you know, everyone's living in, in squalor. It's not as bad as people think. I'll link to a talk by Hans Rosling from TED. He's a statistician and he gives some of the best talks just showing statistically how quality of life of people have improved on this planet in the last 20 years. Well, look, look at this in Indonesia from 97 till now, 20 years, 20% of the country now no longer live on a buck 25 a day. That's insane. That's a huge improvement. And I'm sure, what, what, what a socialism did, did that achieve? No, bloody well didn't. So let's have a look at a few other, other, you know, just things that are interesting. Let's look at military expenditure as a percent of central government expenditure. So we can see here, you know, there it was 13% in 91. Where did he make his quotes? In 2013. You know, about 6%, Australia 6.5. It's going up. You know, you know what it must be. It must be all the uh, the operations we're providing for the transsexuals coming into the army. All of them Russian. The 20 people Russian a year to, to get the free operations. I'm sure that's what it is. I'm sure. That's a joke, by the way. If you can't take it, you're not going to enjoy my channel. And uh, Indonesia is down to 5.3%. So it's, it's kind of set there. So their military expending as part of their government expenditure hasn't really increased. So this aid, you know, from the figures here, you can't, couldn't, you'd have a hard time arguing that it's going into their military or buffing their military at all. Let's look at the uh, income distribution. What bracket do you want to look at, guys? Let's look at the uh, fourth 20%. And we can see here there's a gap. Okay. That's not very exciting. I don't like that one. What else? Let's look at education because that's education, I think, is one of the best ways to gauge a nation or the future. And we'll look at our education level. We'll look at the kids who are not in primary school. Look at that. Now that's wow. That's gone up from 500 half a million in 2010 to 2.3 million in 2016. So in six years. So I'm not sure why that's gone so high. That would be interesting figure to find out. You know, Indonesia, I don't think Indonesia has expanded that much in, in that many years. Unless their population growth has just gone insane. Or they had a baby boom and they all hit the age of uh, school attendance and they didn't get there. But, you know, that there, you'd hope would be something that our aid would be addressing we're going okay mr politician mrs politician you know all our senators who are fighting over name calling each other like hanson young why are you waste prattling on about um Leinhardt, you know calling you such and such when really we look here you go he's our closest neighbor the better they do the better we do it helps us particularly since radical Islam is getting more prevalent in Indonesia, apparently. I heard a few days ago. You, maybe we want to get these people educated. Let's look at the literacy rate. This chart needs more information. What do you mean? Oh, we'll look at the gender. We'll say male and... Oh, we'll just look at the female literacy rate. And what age group? 15 to 24, no suitable data for Australia, but Indonesia, little there you go, 99.65%, 15 plus. Why doesn't Australia have that data? I don't want to filter it by gender. Oh well interesting no data available well look at indonesia's interest rate 99 percent. that's insane that age bracket yep needs more data to compare there's no data there so you can see what we can get here let's look at completion rate maybe of school 
Let's see how many people complete secondary school. And uh, let's see how many girls complete secondary school. Uh, we need more data. Okay, so you can see what we can get here. For one more thing, let's look at uh, birth rate. Yeah, let's compare birth rates between Australia and Indonesia. Birth rates per 1,000 people. 18.9, 12.5. Wow. That's not very good. <laughs> That's Our birth rate's pretty low there. So, guys... I thought I'd have a play around with this to show you that the argument that the money is going into their military, it's not really stacking up. Their military doesn't really compare to Australia. You know, what worries me is uh, I haven't looked into any great detail of where our aid programs are going, but I'd like to know why there's so many children not going to primary school in Indonesia. That's something that I think should be addressed. Well, guys, thank you for joining me for this episode for Heiser Says. I'll put a link to this uh, Google Open Data application so you can have a play with it yourself to kind of get a better, bit of better understanding of what's happening around us. And also to the Hans Rosling talk on uh, TED to just get a perspective of statistics so all these people that saying is a third world third world you know these poor people these poor people we need to give them money we need to implement programs you can kind of tell them well no you know capitalism has kind of already done a lot of that so guys thank you all very much for joining me for this episode please like share and subscribe and i will see you all again next time bye for now